What's going on, everybody? It's DJ Super, Violator All Star DJs. Philly radio probably had the biggest influence on me listening to it, especially like in the early 90s. You know, I got a, I got a name drop DJs like J Ski and uh, Touch Tone and, 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 and DJ Ran and I'll tell you what it is, 60 Minutes of Funk, Volume 3, Funk Master Flex. That turned me out. That was the joint right there. That, Tony Touch the Peacemaker. So it's a little New York, little Philly mixed together. After, after a while, I used to record the radio all the time in cassette tape. A lot of the kids don't know about the cassette tapes. I used to record the, the mixes on a the, on the, on the cassette tape on the radio, and after a while, I was just like, I love what they're doing with these records, so let me save up a little money and get some turntables and do it myself. I want to say 92, and I didn't even know who they were at the time because I was a kid. I say I was like eight years old. They reminisce over you, Pete Rock, CL Smooth. To me, it was just like, I don't know what this is, but this shit is hot. This shit is crazy. You know, it was like, I'm a kid, I'm like the saxophone. I'm like, yo, that was probably my earliest memory of just hip hop in general. And I was like, you know, I like the bounce to this. I like, I like the flavor that this is bringing right now. This is crazy. I became a violated DJ in 2008. I was doing radio in Illinois, Hot 105.5. Um, a couple of cats in the crew heard me. Somebody referred me from that market. I was out in the Midwest. Took about six, seven months. Next thing I know, I was on a conference call with them. And then next thing I know, I started doing satellite radio, Hip Hop Nation. Like the next two years after that, violated the radio and cut. I mean, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I don't necessarily like everything that I play. I don't like a majority of the stuff that I play. In the clubs, that is. In the clubs. In the clubs. But. That's what the people are want are requesting and wanting to hear, but I mean everything is slow, everything is just dumbed down. You know what I'm saying? And as a DJ, I I want so much more. I think I find myself having more fun DJ in '90s parties and like even early just throwback parties in general, just because the music was a little more up tempo, was a little more. Lyrical, the beats were a little better, but that was that's probably the biggest obstacle is just a lot of music coming out that I don't necessarily like, but I have to play. My mother was probably my biggest supporter. She helped get she helped me get my first pair of turntables off layaway at the Franklin Mills Mall <laughs> back when they used to sell turntables. My first pair of turntables were a pair of Newmark Belt Drive 1510s. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> Whack, but I was so happy to get them Jones. Like it was, it, it was like in a DJ starter kit. So it came with some little whack ass headphones that I broke the first week I got them. Little power speakers, little needles. Everything came in a box, and it was belt drive at that. If you know, if you're not a DJ, you know the belt drive platters wobbly. I didn't know anything. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted some turntables and. I, she helped me get those off of layaway. I put like $50 down on them one day. We went to the Franklin Mills. She just took them off layaway for me, and I've been DJing ever since. A DJ that was strong in, in all of his categories. You know, under the umbrella of a DJ, I'm first and foremost a, a party club DJ. I do events, I do weddings, I do radio, mix shows, I do mixtapes, and a tour DJ as well with an artist. So under those four lanes, I just want to be dope in all four of those lanes. Like, all right, he's good in assists, he's good in rebounds, he's good at points, you know, just dope in all four categories, you know. That's how I want to do that.